Hello friends and welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome to Set Up Our Dives where we basically dive below the surface of life's important issues and we basically extract, okay? We extract the pearl of the gospel. We just show how, you know, at the end of the day, no matter what issue we're tackling, Jesus is truly the answer and the gospel of Christ is the answer. So in today's video, guys, um, I know I've been gone for a little bit, okay? This is going to be more of like a podcast maybe type of video. Um, I just kind of purposely going to leave this, you know, this whole session unedited, just raw. And the reason for it is just because I want to really talk from from my heart not that I don't talk from my heart in my other videos um you know but in other videos I'm more doing either a commentary or you know I have like this structure okay and not that I'm not gonna have a structure in this video but I think the reason why I wanted to just kind of leave all the you knows and the ums in this video is just because I just want to be real with you guys <laughs> where I am um, and I know I've been kind of gone for at least you know almost two weeks now and the reason for that is just that I was on kind of like vacation but not really kind of vacation so basically had this great opportunity to go on this tour following the footsteps of Apostle Paul basically traveling through the Mediterranean and different islands um, and countries and just tracing the journey of the Apostle Paul in his ministry to advance the gospel it honestly was an amazing opportunity, guys, and I, it's it's a miracle that it even happened, you know, it's almost like one of those things that I truly think God used for a reason in my life, like God wanted to show me something, you know, and I went with my mom, so I was like stuck on this cruise, on this cruise boat for a little bit, and I was in the midst of flight, so, you know, it's interesting because my channel hit 1k, and I wanted to to make a video, you know, and I was just stuck on a boat and I had like no service, like the Wi-Fi sucked, you couldn't upload a video. And then I tried making a video, I didn't have my like my equipment, my lights, none of that, you know, and I was just like, I took it as a sign that God just wanted me to chill out, okay, and just to process everything. And boy, have I been doing quite a bit of processing. I've been doing a lot of processing, guys. And uh, in today's video, guys, I'm going to kind of sort of going to divide this video into three parts where I'm going to share with you guys my honest feelings with like the fact that this channel is kind of gaining more attention and growing. Um, and then I want to transition to talking a little bit of about calling. Um, and lastly, I want to share more about like the vision, my vision for this channel. OK, and I'm kind of going to hopefully I can, you know, sort of cohesively explain to you guys everything and I am just kind of nervous honestly I'm just kind of nervous and this is going to be probably like one of those podcast sessions honestly so yeah let's dive in how do I feel about my channel growing you know and you know surpassing 1k obviously a lot of you guys a lot of you guys came from Nick's channel you know he did a reaction to one of my videos so a lot of you guys came over and you guys were so sweet in the comment section, so edifying, so encouraging, and just inspiring me to create more content, content. So I'm so thankful for that, guys. I'm like really thankful for your support. And, and it, it, you know, it creates a lot of feelings in my heart because like, I feel like as I'm growing, as this channel is gaining some attention, the weight of responsibility is just sitting on my shoulders, you know? I'm starting to understand where God is taking potentially my life and how God wants me to be useful for his kingdom. And to be honest, it's kind of freaking me out. Like, seriously, like I, you know, even like, and I know like for some of you, maybe some of you are YouTubers and some of you are not or whatever, but like maybe, for, and maybe you're just watching, you're like, oh, 1K is not that big of a deal, right? But for me, it is, okay? It is a big deal because I... Even just creating YouTube was such a major step of faith because, like I said, I didn't know how to do cameras, lights, software, like editing tools. Like I didn't know anything. OK, and I was doing a lot of research and just praying to God to open doors and enlighten me, you know, in, on this journey. So, you know, just starting th things up was like a whole act of itself, you know, so 
much more hitting 1K and building a community and all of this. And I see how God is bringing traction to this. And I am just like, Lord, I don't know how to process this because, you know, I feel like the weight of responsibility and my calling is being revealed. And I just, I'm feeling a lot of emotions. Okay. And the reason why I'm feeling a lot of things, I think is for three reasons. Okay. Well, you know, three, well, let's keep it two, And then uh, maybe I'll mention the third one, but, um, I would say that the first reason is because of intent. Okay. And what do I mean when I say intent? I just believe that no matter what we do for Jesus, okay, no matter what form of ministry that might be, you know, no matter what call God has for our lives, whatever service that we do for the kingdom of God, if you're a vessel of God, right? I truly believe that all your acts, all your doings ought to flow from the right motives, okay? They ought to flow from the right intent. And here's the thing. Jesus really cares about the motives of your heart. He doesn't just want your offering, your doings. He wants to see the heart behind your offering. He wants to see the heart. Where is the doing coming from? The source, the origin, okay? God truly cares about that. And so my hope is that everything that I do, my videos, my, the content that I create flows out of my intimacy with Jesus, okay? Flows from my closeness to Christ, from my cultivated, the depths of my relationship with Jesus, that it's all being birthed out of that. Not just from my head or from my opinion, okay? Like, I want everything to flow out of my, my love for God, from that first love for God, from that fire for him, that passion for him. Like, and I care about that a lot because God cares about that. Jesus cares about this. And one of the most scariest scriptures in the Bible are actually in Matthew 7, um, where Jesus says, you know, like, you know, people, these people who were serving Christ, you know, they come up to him and they're like on, on the judgment day and they're basically like, well, we did, we casted out demons in your name with this, we did that in your name and that in your name. And Jesus says, says to them, depart from me. I never knew you. I think honestly, guys, those are some of the scariest words in the gospel. Okay. Because it looked like these people were doing a lot for Jesus. Okay. And, and they specifically say, we were doing all these things in your name. But Jesus said, I never knew you. So this points to the fact that no matter what we do in the name of Jesus, it has to flow out of intimacy and relationship. And if it's not flowing from that, you need to stop your doings and reconnect in your prayer closet, in your time spent with the Lord, away from YouTube, whether, whether what you do is YouTube, whether that is preaching or whatever you do, you know, take a break from all that and make sure your heart is in the right place to make sure you, you feel that, you know, that, that presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, you know? So, and I don't ever want, you know, have like my YouTube over here and me and God over here. No, YouTube videos, everything flows from this intimacy, which with Christ, with Christ in me, you know? So I am really, really, and this is why I'm like, I, I care so much about my intent. So, cause at the end of the day, this is to bring glory to Christ, not me, you know? And so I care a lot about that. So that's why I feel the way of responsibility. Okay. And then the second part is that the reason why I'm having all these emotions and feelings is because I also cared very deeply about validity and truth and accuracy. And because we live in such a deceitful age, you know, like even in Christianity where, you know, people who claim to be, you know, these Christ lovers and followers of Jesus, but they're not really preaching the gospel at all, you know, <clears throat> and there's more of man than there's of God in them. And there's more falsehood than truth, you know, and we more than ever need a spirit of discernment. So 
I cared very deeply about everything that I speak about, everything that I present to you guys that is in accordance to the word of God, because the authority on this channel and in my life is the word of God and me making sure that I don't misrepresent God, his words. And that, that's, that, that points back to knowing scripture. Okay. And so I care a lot about that. And here's the thing, guys, if I am saying something and it's not aligning with scripture, you call me out on that because be skeptical of everything. My hope is that, you know, at the end of the day, I'm encouraging and inspiring, but I want you to have a personal relationship with the word because that's how you get to know the heart of God. The beauty of God is in his word. Okay. God's somebody said this, but God's words is God's words are God's thoughts. Okay. The Bible is not just a book filled with words. Okay. The word of God is alive. Okay. And it reflects the character of God, the burdens of God, the desires of God. Okay. And the more time you spend in it, you get filled with the thoughts of God, with the desires of God, with the burdens of God, you know? So, you know, and, and that's why I care, you know, you know, I don't think you can do a good job of, you know, preaching the gospel if you're not in scripture. So that's another thing. I just care a lot about validity and being truthful and, you know, having the word of God as the final authority and just bringing that to light, okay? So those are the, some of the reasons why I'm low-key freaking out, guys, okay? Now, moving on to calling, okay? <sighs> oh my goodness, guys. <clears throat> so one of the things that I said is that I started this YouTube channel because I felt like God was calling me to this. I felt like God has been showing me this consistent pattern in my life where like I would be in a Bible discussion group uh, where I was like doing girls Bible studies um, or something. But God always had me in this light of speaking. OK, even before I started YouTube, you know, and I've had the most wonderful privilege. I gave my life to Christ at the age of 15. I made a decision to follow Jesus. And I remember that I was so overwhelmed with my own inadequacy, with my own wretchedness and my own inability to do this life on my own. And I came to Christ and I repented. And it was a very beautiful moment in my life. And honestly, since 15 and now that I'm 28 years of age, you know, God has done so much work in my heart, you know, in my character. There's things that I look back and I'm like, wow, God, I know I really used to struggle with that. And now I'm free from that, you know, or, you know, I used to have a really bad habit of doing this and you have transformed that, you know, and it's almost like you look at your life and all these things that you now have. And you look at that and you're like, wow, God, all of that is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the power of your word that is alive and, and does not you know, that is not bare, you know, it brings fruit in someone's life. And so, you know, and it's also interesting that, you know, in all of these years, God has sort of like step by step, stage by stage revealed to me sort of the calling that he has for me. And, and one of the reasons why I actually started YouTube was because I felt this burden on my heart of God being like, I want you to speak on these things. I want you to break intention of how I feel about these things and I'm like and it's interesting because it's not I don't feel like God you know in terms of like revealing a calling to you he's not going to give you something totally crazy and out of this world something that you wouldn't feel like you're being led to and called to here's the thing you know I've always known that I've had sort of an ability to be persuasive in writing and then later on in speech okay I used to be very shy. Um, <laughs> I would not like really talk. I was a very introverted kid. But, you know, it's interesting that over time, you know, I became, I kind of gained a voice on, on the page, you know. I was much more, con I was very persuasive in writing. But over time, that became more and more profound in my speech, you know. 
And I used to have these debate classes and civics classes. And like, I used to love those classes. And I remember like debating with this other kid. And it was like, I, I like, I felt in those moments that I was within my element, you know? And so now I see how God has been harnessing and developing that like natural proclivity and now using that on this platform for his kingdom. So and, and that it's all coming together, you know, and as the channel is growing, I'm just like, I'm overwhelmed. And I'm like, wow, God, my calling, I think is becoming clear. But I, at the same time, I can't help but feel like, oh, my goodness, Lord, I, I don't know if I'm the right person for the job. You know, it's like almost one of those moments where, you know, like Isaiah was in the temple and he had the vision, you know, of God's glory. And, you know, what did his words, what were the words on his mouth? He was like, oh my goodness, you know, I am a man with unclean lips and I live among people with unclean lips, but my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. That was the heart of Isaiah. You know, he was like, I will go, you know, and I will go. But like, you know, at the same time, you know, standing before the holiness of God, he saw his own inadequacy, his own inability to do the work of God unless God himself empowers him. And I think that's how I feel. You know, I want to glorify God in this channel. I want to hopefully edify you guys in, you know, in your journeys with Christ. But at the same time, I feel like I have so many ways to grow. I have, I still have things, you know, and it's like this battle, you know, of like, God, please help me because I can't do this myself. You know what I mean? Like I can't do things correctly unless I'm in your word, unless I'm spending time with you, God. And think about even Jesus, okay? Jesus, the son of God, had so much ministry going on, doing so many things for the Lord, right? And yet... He would always go away from his disciples, from everyone. He would leave everything and just spend time with the Father, praying, you know? And can we be better than Jesus? Please tell me. No, right? So what an example that is. You know, if Jesus was doing that, how much more do we have to be doing that? You know, so that our work our actions, whatever we do for God is truly aligned with the spirit of God, with, with the will of God. So, so there's this aspect guys. And here's another thing of it. It's like, I feel like, you know, God has given me a knowledge of himself so early on. And I, you know, one of the reasons why I started the YouTube channel is because I had this reoccurring voice, you know, the older I've gotten, it's like, Nadia, what have you done with that knowledge? What have you, what, what are you going to do with this knowledge? You know what I mean? Are you just going to leave it? You know, you're just going to live your regular life, your, you know, nice life. And, you know, and you're just going to live for a kingdom of your own. And, um, you know, what are you going to do with this? Like this, I, oh, I felt this, you know, I felt the Holy Spirit basically tell me like, you know, one day we all will stand before the Lord, you know, and God's going to ask you, what have you done with this knowledge of the gospel? Did, did you have a burden for the lost? You know, did you have a burden? Did, were your desires my desires, right? Like if, because if you're truly a disciple of Christ, you're a follower of Jesus, you care about the things of the kingdom. God's desires are your desires. God's burdens are your burdens, right? Because it's almost like you're spending time with your Lord. You're spending time with your friend and you guys discuss things, right? And naturally you're going to care about the things that your friend cares about right you're going to be in tune with with what their vision is right so if you truly have this relationship with god you know one day you're going to sin before him and it's and, you know and, and we all will give an account for the life we lived and you know just like i said about matthew 7 you know there's another parable in the bible that always freaks me out and it's the parable of the talents, you know, about this master who had servants and he gave to one of the servant um, five talents to another two and to the third one, one. And he went away and he came back and he was like, well, you know, he asked them, you know, like, well, what have you done with the talents? You know, the one who had five, he multiplied them, you know, the one who had two also multiplied. And then there was one servant and, you know, and he didn't do anything. He buried it and left it alone. 
And, you know, and then the master rebuked him. He said, you basically, he said he called him a lazy servant. There's a translation that says a slothful servant, you know, and I don't want to be a slothful servant. I don't want to be a servant that didn't do anything with the talents that he or she was given, right? And here's the thing. There's not a servant who was not given any talent. Everyone has something from God. You have something that God has given you. But do you spend the time with Christ, with Jesus, asking, God, what would you have me do? Or you just care to live your own life, have a nice house, have a nice car, you know, just do the regular emotions of life. And, and you have never thought about what can I do for the kingdom? That is a questionable thing. Like there's a lot of Christians who just care for their own kingdoms. They could care less about God's kingdom. They could care less about God's desires. They're living for themselves. You know, yes, they're not bad people. They're not doing anything, but their whole life revolves around them. And I don't know if that's, I don't, I don't know how can you truly call yourself a disciple of, 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 of Jesus and just care for advancing your own kingdom and having no burden for the things that God cares about. So I don't know. Obviously, our talents and our gifts look different. But I believe it is truly a responsibility and the call from God's word that you ought to be looking for your calling, asking God, please reveal to me, seek that and you will find God will reveal. If you lack wisdom, God will give you wisdom. But to sit passively and just, you know, go to church and, you know, going to church is not quite serving God. Okay. Just the action of you going to church is not you serving God, okay? Let's get that clear. I think that's even a discussion of its own. But, all right, guys. So, I like I said, you know, I, I as I've gotten older, I realized how special it was that God loved me so much as to reveal himself to me so early on. And I feel a responsibility to do something with that knowledge. Because, you know, to whom has it been given more, right? Like, much will be asked. So, but we must be faithful in the little, before God can give you, God give you more, right? So, and the last thing, you know, in terms of my vision for this channel is that my hope for this channel is that, you know, part of this channel, the structure of this channel will be, you know, part of it will be reaction based, you know, like there'll be certain videos, you know, or certain things that catch my eye or like I find interesting or fascinating and I'll be still reacting to that. Part of it also will be me sharing from my personal walk with Jesus, things that God has taught me, things that I went through, you know. Um, so some of it will be kind of a little bit more personal and hopefully can be edifying to you guys. And then I think the third one will be just from topics that I find interesting, you know, like things that I just would like to talk about, you know. So I think there'll be all that in this show and moving forward. Um, cause it's interesting because I started my YouTube channel with trying to be a vlogger, a Christian vlogger and trying to like do my bed and then talk about to vote. And, and, and I realized that was just not my format. You know, I'm just the kind of gal, just, I sit down and I talk and it's interesting because it seems like God just kind of started to show me that this is the direction you need to go into. And, and I kind of got more response from that. So I love this format of just sitting down and talking to the camera and talking to you guys. So um, so that's going to be kind of the format. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of the vision for this channel. And here's the thing, guys, going back to this cruise that I went on, on this, you know, journey, you know, going through the, you know, following the footsteps of Apostle Paul is that I also, I felt like God isolated me and put me on the ship. And like I had no access to doing YouTube and I was just really reflecting and there's things that God was just showing me. And part of, I'll also share with you some of my lessons from that tour. But like, I felt like God isolated me and showed me the devotion that Apostle Paul had towards ministry, to ad towards advancing the gospel, not his own agenda, but the gospel and the, and the sacrifice he paid for that. And the level of conviction that he had. And it was so inspiring. And I, I kid you not, like, there, so we had to, like, meet up with, you know, with the pastor every evening after our tour and our, our destinations and whatnot. And, like, there were so many times that I just was, like, walking back to my cabin and I was just soaked with tears. 
I was just soaked with tears because God was speaking to me, like saying things that he, where he wants me to, what he wants me to do next. And I just felt like, like I'm like, Lord, I, I just don't know. I don't know. You know, I don't know, but I'm going to follow you. I'm going to live by faith, not by sight. I'm going to, I'm just going to obey, you know? So that's what I want to share with you guys. Just a lot of feelings, a lot of stuff. If you stayed through all this whole video, God bless you. <laughs> Hopefully I was not burdening to you, but essentially guys, what I want to say is that, you know what? At the end of the day, what you do for Jesus matters. Okay. Where your heart is, the intent of your heart matters. You know, the words that you speak and the truth behind them, it matters. All of this matters because at the end of the day, we're not on the, if you come to know Jesus, you're not, you're no longer just living for yourself. You have to understand that you need to live for the desires of God, for the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added on to you. You know, so often we live for ourselves and then the kingdom of God is some, we never even have a thought about the kingdom of God. But that is not the true way of being a disciple of Christ. He comes first and everything else is secondary. And that is the hope for this channel. My vision is to have him first and have everything else be secondary. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening to this video, you know, hearing me out. Um, God bless you all, guys. And just thank you so much for your support. Um, you know, if you're coming across the first time, subscribe to this channel. But anyway, guys, that's all I have to say for today. All right. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.